Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 81 with me Craig Barton. Now this week we continue our voyage through the world of complete lessons that have been uploaded to uh, the TES website just so we can get a bit of an insight into the way teachers think about planning their lessons and the delivery of their lessons and the kind of resources and activities they use. Now you're going to have to forgive me for being a little bit self-indulgent this week because I've actually chosen one of my lessons, but I promise I've got a valid reason. And that's because I believe the way I've set this up is quite a bit different to the ones certainly that we've looked at over the last three or four weeks. Because there's not, on the face of it, actually a lot to this lesson. There's no big fancy PowerPoint or loads of worksheets or tarsias or anything like that. Because the way I like to plan the majority of my lessons these days is to not spend my time doing all the PowerPoint side of things, but simply to spend time planning questions, probing, rich, deep, engaging questions for the students. So I've created a series of, uh, of rich activities, 25 of them at the moment, all freely available on TES. And I just thought we'd have a, a look at one of them today. So this is one of my all time favorites. It's called Function Machines. Now, uh, in terms of the files in included, there is a PowerPoint, a worksheet, and I've built a little thing on um, Excel. And then the key to it is gonna be these questions down here, but we will come to those in a second. So if I crack open the PowerPoint, it looks like this. Each one, I've just put a little bit of background um, about my views on rich tax, tasks and probing questions. Then a little background um, on the task. And this particular one comes from the wonderful ICC AMS uh, project that was up and running a few years ago. And as I said here, we use this every single year now um, across all our sets uh, with our year eights as an introduction to forming algebraic equations. Now the task itself, um, I've just managed to fit onto one PowerPoint and I've tried to do that with all these rich tasks just to strip it down to the bare bones. And here it is, choose a number <coughs> to go in for your input, follow the top line there and work out what its output is, put the same number in and follow the bottom row there to work out what its output is, and then try another number and do, do students notice anything. Now that's at its most unstructured and I'm fully aware that for, for many classes and many students they're gonna need a little bit more input than that so we'll come to that in a second. But if you've got the kind of class or the kind of students who just wanna run with it, then that should be enough to get them going. And then my next slide is always this, what questions would a mathematician ask? And I always ask that to my students now. If you're a right nerdy geeky mathematician, what question would you ask? based on the things that you've just discovered up there. Um, and then also on the PowerPoint that I've just put um, some blank uh, function machines just in case they're useful. And then here I've got a function machine checker that's on Excel. We'll just take a very quick look at that. And here, just dead, dead simple, I'm pretty rubbish at Excel. You can just change the input and change your things at your times by and so on. And it keeps going from there. But as I say, the real uh, power of this lesson, I believe, and, and all these rich tasks, are the questions that we ask our students. So here, um, I've just put a collection of the, my favorite questions that I've kind of either come up with myself or colleagues have suggested, or better still, students have suggested. Over the last few years, I've been running this task. So, so things like this, design three of your own function machines and work out the difference. I really like this one too. Can you design a function machine that gives you a difference of 24, 10, and 17? How many can you design for each difference? How do you know when you've got them all? Which was the easiest to find? Which was the hardest to find? If I showed you a function machine, could you predict the difference without trying out any numbers? What about bringing in decimals? What about bringing in fractions? What about changing the function machine so they have those following features? Now for me, this is how lessons should be delivered. And I'm not saying that every single lesson lends itself to this style of delivery, but wherever possible, these are my favorite types of lessons. And the simple reason is because they allow that magic thing that we're all striving for, and that's effective differentiation. Because I can start every single child off on the same task, but before I know it, I can be dropping in all these different questions to different students, challenging them and supporting them at appropriate levels. So I don't need to plan millions and millions of worksheets or big fancy PowerPoints or anything like that. As long as I've got enough questions up my sleeve and maybe if I can be bothered, I'll print these out in little bits of paper and drop them in front of kids as I'm wandering around the class. Or I'll just project these up on the board or I'll just have them on a little scrap of paper myself. If I can have enough questions and I can give these to the kids depending on how they're responding to the task, or maybe even give them a choice between which questions they take on themselves, then that for me is effective differentiation. And crucially, every child is working on the same task, but students are working at different depths of that task. Now, 
in terms of kind of a lesson structure and stuff, it's slightly risky, this lesson, because you don't know exactly where it's going to go. There's there's a definite start to it, introducing the task, but in terms of the middle and the end and how long it's going to last, who knows? Um, just for a bit of background, we normally spend about four 50-minute lessons on this particular task. And as I say, that's with all year groups and, um, and all, sorry, with, uh, with all ability levels across our year eight uh, age group. Um, I've also included um, a worksheet and this was in response to a few teachers saying to me that their classes needed things a little bit more structured. So here's a worksheet that just structures it a little bit more but crucially still gives the students an um, opportunity to express their mathematical creativity. So you can adapt these tasks however you want but what I'm really hoping to achieve by this and I'm going to keep putting these up every time I think of them or I dig them out of the archives is if you use the task with you, your colleagues or your students um, and you come up with a good prompt or a good line of inquiry, just share it on this um, on this resource page. And that way the task gets just bigger and bigger and deeper and deeper and richer and richer. And you don't even need to know the answer to the to the prompt, you, you prompt yourself. It could just, just be one line of inquiry, something you think, oh, actually, that might be a little bit interesting to investigate. Um, I've put a link to all my tasks there just on the Mr. Barton page. But if you visit my website, um, I've tried to make them as easy to find as possible. Uh, just go to teachers, teaching resources, and then I've got a new thing here, special resources, and they're in here. And keep your eye on this page. I've got a couple of ideas for two new collections that I'll be working on um, over the next uh, weeks and months. Okay, so I hope that was useful. That's uh, Rich Math Task 25. And I think I might chuck in one more week of, uh, of looking at a lesson collection next week. So I'll see you then. Take care and bye for now.